Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. As you guys can tell today, I'm not on the farm. I'm actually driving. I am going to a blueberry conference, a grower's blueberry conference held by a local extension office here in, uh, in Southwest Missouri. And uh, they do a conference every other year because there's not as many blueberry growers in the area. We luckily, have, we have blueberries. We've got a half acre of blueberries. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys here coming up in the future, in the summertime, our blueberries there. and. Um, we go to a lot of these conferences, even though we go to the same conferences every year or every other year. And um, we go to these just because there's different speakers, different professors from different universities, different specialists. And if I learn one or two things from everybody that could help me increase my yield, my, you know, increased plant nutrition, plant nutrition uptake, just one or two things that I can learn that could help me on our farm. I'm gonna go ahead and do it because you know you learn every day and why not try to have the best quality fruit you could possibly have at your farmers market or as a wholesaler you know just have the best product you can and just learning one or two things from everybody and applying it in at your own farm then you could possibly possibly have you know like I was saying the best yield ever so um, and today there's a specialist from Rutgers University he's been in um, blueberry specialist for the 30 years now so he knows what he's talking about and I'm excited to hear him speak today and I guess we'll see what happens I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys along and hope you guys enjoy the ride Fun fact, I actually go to school here, and today I'm actually skipping class. That's another video for another time, but today, let's go learn about more blueberries. An extra incentive to do this, my wife and I just completed the adoption of a 16-month-old child. Mm -hmm. The happiest consumers of your products. <laughs> <laughs> blueberries. I've had it for quite a long time, so I appreciate him asking me here. Uh, uh, you notice that the title is all I've learned about blueberry for 44 years, and I hope any of this helped. Uh, because uh, I am an extension, and uh, you know what we believe is that uh, you're, you're here to actually get some information that you can take back to uh, your operation. So uh, uh, that's definitely what my aim is today. Uh, you might be wondering why do we why do we have to bring in somebody from New Jersey um, to talk about Uber? Uh, well, uh, how, let's just go forward. Jim Moore's research assistant for five years. 
Jim got his PhD at Rutgers and then took all our Jersey varieties and brought them to Arkansas. And that's how the blueberry industry started in this part of the country. Um, so uh, this is the plot, and Pat recognized it. Uh, this is the plot that when I got there, um, uh, Jim Moore told me that the reason why he uh, hired me is because uh, I'm 6'3", and that helped put these necks up. <laughs> uh, you had to reach way up. I remember this? You had to reach way up with this net up. So um, we couldn't have any short people uh, involved in the next whatsoever. Okay. So, uh, but that's where uh, we got started. Variety trials, uh, uh, pH, uh, mulch, uh, weeding, I mean, all the things involved with blueberries. Uh, that's where I got my first first uh, five years with, uh, with blueberries. And then I went, okay, it's going to cost me $8,500 to put an acre in, and I'm putting 10 acres in. Uh, well, you know, that's $85,000. Do you have $85,000? And you need $85,000, and for the first two years, you're not getting any berry back, all right? So you have to have $85,000 and no return for two years, all right? So that's how you have to think about it. And, and that's very important. Where, what part you don't have, but you have to recreate, all right? So there's all kinds of soil types, I understand that. Now in New Jersey, where blueberries are, it's a sandy, loam soil, all right? With higher amount of that. Now when I was in Arkansas, in Fayetteville, that was not what we had whatsoever, all right? That was a clay soil with less than 1% organic matter, and, and that was very good for me because it was flat out terrible, okay? I mean, it was terrible um, for blueberries. I mean, uh, Jim would say, this is nothing like what New Jersey is. So what do we have to do to change it? And so that's what we did for five years is, what do you got to do to change it, you know? And so we had to build up that organic thing. You know, we had to get that pH down. We, we did all that research and figure all that out, all right? Um, Irrigation. If you're going to plant, and uh, when you finish planting at 12 o'clock, the irrigation has to go at 12.01. All right. If you can't turn the irrigation on the minute after you finish planting, then you shouldn't plant. All right. Um, blueberry plants uh, have no root hair, and so they cannot outcompete anything. All right. So uh, you have to get the water to them ASAP. That's all it is. Anybody says, this is, there's something wrong with my blueberry. I go, it's pH. They go, yeah, but it's, I go, it's pH. Have you checked? It's pH. Okay. Blueberries are so specific as far as what they want. They want 4.5, 4.8. It's lower than that. It's higher than that. No. Uh, it's, it's like, it's like, in, I invited all of you over to dinner my night. Put all the food on the table. The pH is at six, all right? I said, go ahead and eat. Why don't you eat? Well, see, the other thing I did was is I put a piece of duct tape over your mouth. Makes it tough. At six, that's a blueberry plant. Nutrients are there, can't pick it up. All right, and then I'm gonna show you more slide with that. Um, we did a lot of research on blueberry nutrition uh, because everything I thought the New Jersey guys were doing were wrong, so we totally changed what, what they do. Um, what have we done with pre shield? We monitor the pH all the time. Um, annual leaf analysis, we're going to talk about that. Annual leaf analysis. If you're fertilizing depending on soil analysis, um, you're just guessing. Uh, a good thing, take home, if nothing else you learned this time, there is no correlation between a soil analysis and actually what gets in the blueberry plant. No correlation. Okay, I'll show you a slide on that. Monitor and correct any nutrient deficiencies, apply fertilizer at the most efficient time, we'll talk about that. Prune correctly and control weeds. We're gonna kind of go into all these, all right. And we try to sell everything to the public. Uh, we're probably one of the larger uh, UPIC operations in the state of Kansas, which is really not saying much. Um, <laughs> one thing I'd like to start off with um, is Missouri has an excellent extension just the fact that you have this meeting available to you all to come here and they bring somebody like Gary in here to speak, this is fabulous. Kansas, trust me, does not have this uh, support network and 
able to get growers together and try to get a little education. A lot of what I'm going to tell you today here is learned through hard knocks. Um, anyway, we're going to get we're going to get started. So, location, location, location. Um, for those of you, like quite a few of you are beginners, maybe don't even have any in the ground yet or thinking about this, think about where you're going to put these berries. Do you have a place for them? Um, and is this place suitable? Just because you have a few, a few acres somewhere um, that you think, oh, gee, that would be a nice place to put blueberries, put yourself in the blueberry shoes. Where would you like to be if you were a blueberry, a blueberry plant? So you need to think ahead. Um, is this your choice for convenience or is it the blueberry's choice? Is the best site? Once you plant that plant, you've got a long life plant. You've got a plant that can live much longer than probably most of us in this room. So uh, if you can stick on a poor site, you're stuck on a poor site forever. Um, drainage, you think both air and water. Uh, over there sinks, you've got frost problems if you're putting down by a tree at the lower level somewhere. Um, they like the full sun, sloping works best. Field selection, same thing. Up and down slope if it's not too steep, gives you good drainage. Depends on your soil type. Your soil type is going to be probably different here. Southwest Missouri is where I am. I'm out just outside of Kansas City. We have very tight clay soils. So in tight clay soils, we like to burn. Everything I plant, I learned the hard way um, through some bike operations with our peach tree. Everything we plant is on burn. So um, if internal drainage is good, you don't need that. If you have a sandy, gravelly soil, if after you go out there and you get an inch or two of rain and things pretty well settle down in short order, you may not need burns. Okay, soil prep. Um, you don't want to do it, you know. Um, <laughs> adaptation, right? Um, you need something that actually is good for your site. Um, yield. Realize a lot of these, some are great yielding, some are Good deal, but maybe if you make up for that, uh, grow it anyway. This is an exploration of what we do, okay? And so we're always learning something every day, which is great. Uh, I've always told myself if my job, you know, if I stop learning and I think I know everything, then that's the time for me to retire, okay? So, so again, I really want to, you know, really point that out to you guys as well. Um, so today, uh, what I want to do, I'm kind of switching things up a little bit differently because I want to, again, get a lot of input from you, okay, because I'm, I'm not the answer in the plug space. Alrighty, y'all, that was it for today. Um, very valuable information, a lot of information was given out today. I learned a lot. Learned a lot about soil pH, about, you know, adding that fertilizer, adding that sulfur down before you do plant, you know, about before before planting, how you use field preparation, site selection, cultivar selection, different varieties, and um, a lot to learn. I wrote a lot of notes down, so I'm gonna go home and review those. But this is why I go to these conferences, is because, you know, you learn one or two things about how to increase your yield, about plant nutrition uptake by the plant, and by increasing your yield means, um, Potentially means more yield and more money in your pocket at the end of the day. It was funny how Dr. Gary uh, Pelvis uh, from Rutgers University he said the exact same words that every farmer is all about the money. You know, they grow for, uh, you know, they grow their crop for blueberries. And the only way to increase it, your yield, is to have the right fertilization, the right, uh, the right plant available nutrients. And that's all through your pH of the soil. And then it increases your yield and the right cultivars. So tomorrow we are going to on a on a tour, taking a tour out from some uh, local farmers here in Southwest Missouri. That's where we're located, and um, that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to take you guys on for tomorrow at the conference or on the field trip. So you guys stay tuned for that. It's going to be exciting stuff. There's different types of uh, plantation of blueberries and mulches with synthetic mulches. Different types of fertilizers are going on. Different trials. So I'm really excited about that, see how that goes out tomorrow. But until then, we'll see you next time. You guys are awesome. Have a good day.